Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. I'm glad I'm here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not in a jail. <laughs> Not in a hospital. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. We're going to go into our praise and worship book today. And we're going to go to 14. One of my favorite songs. I think they're all my favorite, though. You know? Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. You're
the Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, we're going to do uh, page eight. Shout to the Lord.
this right here was done before we became a state. We were still part of Virginia. Wow, I didn't know that. This happened here was, uh, we have records that show that it's back dated into the 1700s. Now if anybody is a history buff, <coughs> which I'm not, but we have records that show and it also shows, now this right here was this one right here, and then there was another Zor that was up the road here across the covered bridge up there. And then they came here to this, but this was actually called a block building. And because they had Indians, there was Indians, so they would had, had this build up here. And if you've ever noticed, the blocks outside are enormous. But it was, it was like a fort. It was up here. You could see all around. You could see there was a, and uh, if anybody's got the, um, the um, recipe book, 
uh, from around this area, Aurora Point, you will see in the front cover that it talks about an Indian girl, uh, not an Indian girl, a little a girl here, and the Indians was coming through in a hunting party, and she hid in a sycamore tree. Huh. It's very interesting. But this right here has been about, now we've added on to it, and when my father uh, was here as a minister here, uh, there was a pot-bellied stove, and there's upstairs, I think, Larry, you've been up there, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And there's part of the chimney that's still up there. <laughs> so, you know, if anybody comes into church and says, well, the roof won't stand, the roof will, but if those, those bricks come down, you'll know what you <laughs> You'll know to move, because, but they're right up there. They're still a mess. So there's a lot of history to where you're sitting right now. But the thing that really interested me when I was uh, thinking about this and going back over the mind and had read this was that the, this church was established in a missionary outreach church. That's what it was. That was Zor. Back in those days, they had missionaries. And we still have missionaries. We still give to missionaries. See, and I, when I read that, I was amazed to think that this church is still doing what they did back in those days. We still, God has still continued to allow us to do that. And, you know, we sent Isaac out, and he's got a nice church over there at Hagen's. He's got a nice church. And um, so he, could, he has his church. Well, then Connie and Larry was here, and they were here for a while, and then Connie and Larry left and went to Virginia, and they started a, their Christian school up. And they had a church. She works where they work in that church and a new church, the Victory, Victory uh, Gospel. Gospel, yeah. So she's working, so that's another sent out. We sent Marianne out. We keep pulling her back. <laughs> but at least we sent her. Still trying. They were still trying to pull her back. But anyhow, it's sort of it's sort of amazing to me when I read that to think that this church has started years and years and years ago being the same thing that it is today. Somebody that will send out money. We have our different little uh, people that we send money to, and they're all for the gospel. They're all for feeding, for taking care of. It's a missionary type Amen. thing. And so we send that out, and what we do, they have, you know, that we help with them. None of us go out and do what they do. We're here. Mm -hmm. But what we do, we get to become part of it. So we have the Jewish people that we help, and we have Mills on Wheels, and we have Union Mission, and we help we help around in our in our neighbor, you know, in our in our little state here. So we have a lot of things that that God has allowed this church to do. And I was thinking more about that. And I was thinking about that, and and He gave me Psalms ninety one. So let's go to Psalms ninety one this morning, because it immediately when I was reading, thinking about that, it came right to me. Psalms 91, because see, it starts talking about what he wants to do for you and I. Now this, this chapter, probably you all know a chapter, and so we're going to go through it. <clears throat> but the very first thing he says, he that dwelleth. So that means you, you have to make a choice to dwell. And he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, live, reign, dwell under the shadow of the Almighty God. So it says it's something you have to decide. You have to want that. You have to want to dwell. You have to desire. You have to have a desire to dwell. It says, I will say of the Lord, that's you. He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Mm -hmm. Now see, when we start talking like that, see, you're talking, you're speaking things. You're saying, I'll say to the Lord. Do you talk to the Lord? Well, this is what you say. You say, you know, you're talking to him. You're talking to him. You said, he is my refuge. He and my fortress. My God. See, it's your God. In him will I trust. And then it says surely. So if it says surely, it means it's a sure thing. He shall deliver thee from the snout of the fowler. Now that's talking about being trapped. And the fowler is a bird. And birds usually are prey to other things. But anyhow, that you can be trapped. See, it says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snap or from this trap. 
Have you ever felt like you were trapped? Well, he said, I'm going to take you out of it. I'm going to, I'm going to, he said, sure, he'll deliver you and I. And he says, and then he said, from the noises, pestilence, or from something that annoys you, or that you have not, these pestilence. Pestilence are something that takes over diseases. People that have high blood pressure. People that have a lot of trouble. He said, I'm going to take you from them if you'll give them to me. But see, we have to be, we have to be willing to do that. He says, surely he'll deliver thee. It's a sure thing God wants to deliver us. Anybody out there? Amen. <laughs> I'm just looking to make sure anybody's out there. I don't know, huh? Maybe, maybe I'm just staying there. I don't know. But anyhow, see, it's a sure thing. God really wants to do this. He has a desire Amen. for you and I to be dwelling in him, abiding in him. Now, like last Sunday was that you live, you abide. If he abides in you and you abide in him, you can ask him what you will. But there has to be an abiding. You have to desire to know God. You have to desire to want God. And then you have to know what his word says. And his word says, surely, it's a sure thing, he'll deliver you. And he says, and he shall cover thee with thy feathers. So there's, there's the feathers. And under his swing shall I trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And I'm going to tell you, the word of God is the truth of God. And the truth of God is the word of God. Amen. You do not separate them. You cannot separate God from his truth, and you cannot separate him from his word. It is always the truth. And he said he'll cover thee. It is his plan to cover you with feathers. Now, if you've ever seen it, if you've ever seen an old hen, she'll put out her like this, she'll fluff out like this, and them little chicks will just yeah. run right underneath of her. And it can be pouring down the rain. Them little babies, they're safe, and they're warm, and they're dry. Now, the mother might be getting wet, but them babies aren't. Them babies are not getting wet because they are under the protection. Let me tell you something. Our God wants to protect us from everything. Amen. Amen. He desires to do that. And see right there it says, it says right there, and he shall cover thee. That's what he wants to do. He wants to protect us. He wants to cover us. And he wants us to trust in him. And you know, when things go wrong in your life, it's sometimes a little hard to trust God. Because, see, you don't understand what's going on in the first place. And the second place is, you can't always see God working. Amen. You don't always see God working. But you should know He's working. Amen. Amen. Whether you see Him or not, you should know it. Because, see, you're trusting God. And see, when you start trusting God, then you start knowing God's got a good plan for you. Whether you know the plan or not doesn't make any difference. All you got to be is the instrument that he can go through. So he's talking about it. And it says, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by the errors that fly by day. You do not have to be afraid of terrorism because you're trusting God. You don't have to be afraid of bullets flying. I used to use this on Mikey whenever he'd go hunting. I didn't know how good he was. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure he was covered. So I would use this on him. He didn't have to be afraid of errors, things that'll kill you. Don't have to be afraid of that. Why? Because you're trusting in God. And God's word is truth. God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will be with you until the end. Now I want to read over here. Let's go to... Um, I'll flip over here to Isaiah 54, and I'm going to read this, 13. This is all, and all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness thou shalt be established, thou shalt be far from oppression. I'll tell you one thing, oppression has really taken over the United States. There are so many people that are oppressed. And it says, an <clears throat> oppression, for thou shalt not fear. And far from terror, far from terror, for it shall not come near thee. See, that's the word of God. Amen. And then it says, I love the rest of it, and I'm going to read the rest of it because I like it. It says, come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together. 
They shall surely gather together, but not by me. God's not oppressing you. God's not putting terrorism on you. God's not doing that to you. He wants to keep us safe. He wants us to come under his wings. He wants to protect us. He wants to show us his love. He wants to do all these things for us. And it says, And far from terror, for thou shalt not come neither, near, near thee. Behold, thou shalt, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. He says, not by me. I'm not doing it to you. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall. Hallelujah. Amen. They shall fall. What comes against you, that person, that thing, whatever it is, it will fall. Amen. That's God's work. Mm -hmm. For your sake. It's going to fall for your sake. Why? Because you're trusting in God. That's right. God is your provider of all things. Behold, that means look, I have created the smith and that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument of his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. And I'm going to tell you right now, if he created him, he can destroy him and he will. Amen. In the latter days, whenever this is ended over, that guy is heading for hell. Amen. A lake of fire. He said, I have created, I can take care of him. There's nothing he can do. Nothing he can do. There's nothing that Satan can do to you that God can't undo. See, God is, that God is what we need. It says, um, no weapon. See right here it says, no weapon. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the, this is the heritage of the servant. That means you've inherited this. That's your, that's your inheritance. The inheritance, the servant of the Lord. And their righteousness or their right standing with me is of me, saith the Lord. So God has given you and I righteousness to stand with him. We are in right standing with him. When you make him the Lord of your life, everything that you have belongs to him and everything he has belongs to you. Amen. And we get the best deal. Amen. Because he has everything. Amen. All he wants from you and I is to be a vessel that is willing to allow him to live and to, to dwell and to reign in our lives Amen. so that he can protect us. He can give us what we need. That's what he desires for you and I. So when you get to looking at this, and it says, the next verse, it says, um, the pestilence, it says, nor the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor the destruction that waste at noontime. Now right there is the pestilence, that means sickness. Any kind of sickness that you have in your body, it says, nor the pestilence that walk, a dark, and walk in the darkness, nor the destruction of the waste at noontime. And it says, a thousand shall fall at thy, at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. Because you're trusting in the Lord. If you don't trust in the Lord, then all these things, you have given in to Satan, and Satan can do it to you. I mean, that's, that's his job. Amen. And I guarantee you, he's out there doing his job. He's working overtime in lots and lots of ways. He's working overtime. He is, the whole thing is to destroy everybody. Amen. And if he can get somebody who loves God and gets, and gets them down and destroys them, he's going to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, he don't work as hard as the ones who has not accepted him because he already has them. But when, he has, when, we, don't have, when we have God, he works against us. All the time he's working against us. And it says, it says right there, it says, it says, a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. And I'm going to tell you right now, the reward of the wicked, the best reward of the wicked is for them to give their life to God. That would be, Amen. that right there would be the best. But you know, you're going to see with your eyes, you'll see things. You'll see, you'll be able to see it. You'll be able to see it because he said, because thou has made, then it goes right into something else. You're going to be able to see the reward of the wicked. They're not going to make it. But for us to want to see someone go to hell because they've done something bad to us, I don't think that's very nice of a Christian, do you? No. I think we should want to see them turn their life over to God. Amen. And to serve God. To desire to serve God. And then the next verse it says, 
Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. So you're in. So you live. You've made the Lord. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. See, we need to take a hold of the Word of God for what the Word of God says. Now, this was David writing this. Of course, this was David, and he had a lot of things happening to him. But you know one thing about David. He was a man after God's own heart because he had love. He had a covenant. And if you are born again, Christian, you have a covenant with the Most High God. Do you know how special you are? Yeah. You are so special to God that God gave his, his, his only begotten Son so that we could have a right standing with him. His son died for us on the cross of Calvary, went into hell for you and I, came up out of hell and said, all power has been given to me both in heaven and earth. Now you go. So he gave us the power. And when he says this stuff to us, it's, that's it's to give us, you know, we read the word of God and you see a lot of things in there and you see things happen. But you know, these old prophets in this Old Testament, I'll tell you one thing. We think we went through things. We can go through anything compared to what they're going through. Amen. Take a look at Paul. Look at Peter. None of us are being held upside down with our head cut off. None of us. We still have freedom here in, in, in the United States to serve God, to worship Him, to honor Him, to glorify Him, to praise Him, to exalt Him, to lift Him up. See, we have that all. All we have to do is open your mouth and start praising God. And it says, There shall no evil befall thee, nor any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Now this right here says, Nigh thy dwelling. That's where you live. So don't let any of this stuff come near your home. Amen. And the way you do that is plead the blood of Jesus over your home. Amen. Mm -hmm. Start pleading the blood. See, the blood is what cleanses you and I from all unrighteousness. When you plead the blood of Jesus over there, the Satan can't come across, he can't, stop, he can't come across the bloodline. You know, we plead the blood of Jesus over the doorposts of this church. Amen. The doors, the pulpit, the piano, the drums, seats. the seats, the altar, the flag. Mm -hmm. All of that is pleaded with the blood of Jesus. Do you know how many shootings they have in, in um, uh, Churches, killing. See that bloodline stops things. Amen. You say, well, there's wicked people. Yes, there is wicked people out there, but there's also righteous people in here. Amen. We have a right standing with God, mm -hmm. and when we say something, the angels. You can go right on over there in one of the other in one o three, and it says that those angels hearken to the word. Of God. And if you and I speak the word of God, those angels hearken to the word. Amen. So they're going to hearken to you and I when we speak it. All we got to do is believe. speak it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then, like Mary said, believe what you speak. Yes. So you have to, we have to, we have all this in, all, he wrote all this down for you and I. Do you know what an honor it is to be born again? Do you know what an honor it is to have God as your God? Thank you. Amen. Do you know how, how honor it is that you are find favorable by God? God favors all of us. Amen. I mean, it's to me, it's exciting Amen. to think that somebody high would even think about me. Amen. But see, he does think about you and I. That's why Jesus came and, and, and died on the cross, because he thought so much of us. So you can see that, and it says, um, "For he will give, um, for he will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways." Now I'm gonna tell you what. Okay, thou shall bear, thou shall bear thee, they shall bear thee up with their hands, lest thy dash their foot against the stone. Did he not say? Did the devil not say this to Jesus? He actually quoted the Bible to Jesus. Now come on, did he not think Jesus knew the Bible? <laughs> Jesus knew the Bible. Amen. But he quoted this right here, this thing, when he took him up and put him on the pinnacle. He said, jump off. 
Good angels will bear you up unless you die sure footy. He said, <laughs> you know, he, Jesus didn't even get mad. I'd have probably come off there and ripped his head off. But see, that would be that would be the flesh here. But what I'm saying, Jesus just said, you know, thou art rebuked. You know, man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. See, he retaliated like that. We don't always retaliate like that. Am I the only one that does that? No. <laughs> no. Depends on the mood I'm in, I guess. I don't know. It says, they shall bear thee. Oh, I read that. Okay, now look at this. Thou shalt tread upon. See, it talks about what you can tread upon. You can tread upon the lions, the adder, the young lions, the dragon, and shall trample under the feet. This right here represents any sin that's out there. You don't have to give in to sin. You don't have to do sin. He says, but thou shalt tread upon it. And you know, an adder, of course, is the snake and the li young lion and the dragon, Komodo dragon or whatever they're called. This right here is something that he has given you power over. Amen. That's what it's representing. You have power Amen. because you have a covenant with God once you give your heart to God. There is a covenant. You come into covenant relationship with the Most High God. You have to do that. Nobody can do it for you. You have to want to do this. And it says right here, because he has said his... Now, this goes into another thing. This is Now, this is Jesus talking to you and I. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. See, this is personal. This is personal. This is what Jesus is saying. Because he has set his love upon me. Do you love the Lord? Amen. Amen. Okay. And it says, therefore will I deliver him. That's what Jesus is saying. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. Do you call on the name of Jesus? Yeah. When you call on the name of Jesus, everything in heaven stops because that name is above every name Amen. and that name can stop Satan in his tracks Amen. see that's what the name is for it's to help you and I see God has given us his son of course he's given us his name he's given us his blood he's given us his righteousness See, God has gave us stuff to use to fight the devil. Right up there, it says you can trample on Satan. Satan does not have to. He's to be put under our feet. He is not to lord over us. He's to come under. He has no place in our life. And he has no authority. And right there, it says, because you've given, you set your love on him, he said, hey, I'll set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me. Do you call upon the Lord? Yes. Amen. Do you call upon him in the time of trouble? Yes. Do you call upon him just because you love him? Amen. Just because you think about him? You know, a lot of people, um, they'll talk to God, and you know, you may never think they even talk to God. You may not think that they even know him. But you know, it says right there, he shall call upon me. Don't say that the pastor shall call upon him. Right. Song leaders call upon him. Mm -hmm. It's talking an individual. Right. It's saying to you, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. Amen. See, that's the word of God. When you call upon God, yes. he will answer you. <laughs> And then he says, and I will be, it says, answer him, and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. See, these, these are, this is what God is saying to you and I. He's saying that. He said, you know, Gans, I love you guys. Gans, I want to be the best friend you have. Talk about being a BFF. I hope I got that one right. 
<laughs> got to get it right. Yeah. BFF. I got to watch sometimes I get these things, man. But see, he wants to be everything. He wants, he wants to take care of you. He wants to hold you. He wants to love you. He wants to show you things you've never known. Why? Because he wants, he says, I'll deliver you. I'll honor you. It says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And the word salvation means wholeness, soundness, deliverance, anything you need. Anything you need, that's what he wants to do. But this is what this, this church, and I love it because when I found out that the church was a missionary, we are covered. This was a block building. They came here for protection. This is what this is talking about, being protected, having the protection of God, showing us that we, we desire more than anything else to be likened unto him. You know, we have a lot of people likened to be under, to, to be likened other people but let us want to be likened to the way that God is Amen. filled with love and joy and peace and gentleness and kindness and meekness and temperance let us have that kind of self control let us know that he wants to honor us let us know that we are special in his sight let us know that he wants to do things powerful in our lives Amen. let us know that you are loved by the almighty God and he desires you, and he desires to, to take you and place you in a place where you've never been. You don't know the goodness of God. None of us know the goodness of God like we ought to. Amen. We only know a little bit of it. See, we haven't went into the fullness of God. We have not let we have not went into the fullness of God. We have just started. But I'm gonna tell you one thing. When you get started, and you really desire to serve God, it's the best thing that ever happened to you. So we'll get a song. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand to work. She always does a wonderful job. Amen. 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 We don't realize how blessed we are to have a church like this. Amen. We are really blessed. Yes. Praise yes. God. All right, we're going to do, uh, let's do 25 in the songbook. Where could I go but to the Lord? To the Lord. That's what she was preaching about. Amen. You got to go to the Lord. Sometimes we can't get a hold of the preacher. Sometimes we can't get a hold of somebody else. But we can always get a hold of God. He's always there. Hallelujah. Through the good times and the bad times. Living below in this so simple world. Hardly hunger can afford Striving along to face temptation sore Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? 
Help 